steelhead, chrome, powerful, beautiful, and resilient. Oncorhynchus micus, as they're called under their scientific name, truly are mythical creatures. Icons to most anglers, but to us addicts, they're our lifeblood. As we touched down on our second Alaskan adventure, the anticipation was high. Many would be surprised that for every 100 steelhead that go to the ocean, only five to 10 return. After spending one to three years in the river system, these special trout decide to leave their home rivers and head to the deep blue. Now fast forward two to three more years, this is where Mr. Mikus will encounter his first sport fisherman. It was April, the snow was beginning to melt, the wildlife was getting hungry, and the trip we've been planning for over a year had finally begun. The meat has to make it farther than the garage this time. You should write on it, no dogs allowed. Hopefully... Is it spicy, is it spicy chicken? chicken? It is spicy. <laughs> Spiciest. Oh. It's Jamaican jerk chicken. Oh, yum. Right. Forget anything? I'm done thinking about it, I know I am. But Dressing it. yourself in your mind? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking, Reaching though, the this. cool Reaching part about that. it is, if we do forget anything, people are coming up in two days. Yeah. Jerry is coming up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I never went to bed. The day that first day when we were going to the airport, I never went to bed that night. I just stayed up all night, tied jigs, tied flies, and went to your house, Cameron, at 1 o'clock in the morning. 1.30? 1 o'clock. It was 1.30. Yeah, I think it was 1.30. Yeah. Do you know why I like the middle? Tell me. I get to do this with you guys uh, right It's here. warmer this way. <laughs> We're bros. <laughs> I get all cuddly with you. I ended up driving from my house to the airport and I don't know how I stayed awake. These five guys are in my truck and they are all asleep for hours. And I'm just like, ugh. It was, it was bad. Are you feeling stressed or blessed right now? Oh, tired. So apparently, Lonnie's are coming so now. Like We're trying to take pro logs to Alaska. Room. Apparently, the worst thing you can take to the airport is an oar blade. So here we are, delayed. Did you get done with your pro, Lonnie? Yeah. I gotta get an old button back up here. <laughs> so moral of the story is, don't try and bring oar blades on an airplane. What they said? I think they thought it was a weapon, like a baseball bat or something. Or it could be filled with drugs. That'd be pretty sneaky. <laughs> and they would never see that one cut off. <laughs> pretty much after we had the Kickstarter and the, the idea of making Addicted Alaska one for salmon, from the moment that we decided it'd be on silvers, people were asking about steelhead. So we made it to the after meeting at our house at two o'clock in the morning and me sitting next to two fairly large guys on the airplane. Like it was ridiculous. I couldn't sleep and it was, it was tough. It's like hot out here. Yeah, I know dude, what the hell? like freaking sunwall. Hasn't really sunk in yet. What's about to happen? It's gonna happen. Who's gonna get the first fish? Me. Josh Candy's not yeah, here, so well, naturally uh, I got the first one last time, so if we just keep this going. It's kind of a trend. So yeah, I got my meat here safe. No. We already have one culprit oh. right here. 
Oh. Dude, this is sick. I'll be down there by five weight and then coming tied sometime. Pretty nuts. So we made it here in the I got my rods ready. First one ready. I'm gonna be the first one to catch fish. Cam's not even got his rods ready yet. Hey! I'm gonna go up river first. We might go down river this evening. Don't know where we're gonna go yet, but we're gonna we're gonna put it all together and go find some fish. Lonnie and Jordan are on the back deck, rigging rods. Phil and I are upstairs going through tackle. Like we're go time. We went all the way in the top part of the river, and typical fisherman, what do you do? You got a bridge, you go stand and you look at it, look yeah, off of it. You have to. Walked right over there, looked down and went, oh, it, these things are like silvers. There's a hundred steelhead laying there and there was some big fish milling around. A guy was sitting on the boat ramp. He caught one like while we were there, like before we even got lines wet. So us being fishermen, what's the second thing we do when we see those fish? Cast it off the bridge. Yep. <laughs> 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 you want to have like you, let's just go three up, three down, yeah, right? And then just divide and conquer a little bit just because, might as well. Yep. I really think we can finish up here. Right at dusk. Right here. Twilight. Oh yeah. These, so back here at these chrome ones will turn on. Uh, yeah, I I say, know, there's, some, there's some dimes in uh, They had it, like three or four. Do you see that one chase that's been all the way to my rod Three there? of them were And then they just turned around the same way. It just didn't oh, like. I think they, so much yeah. stuff here. That's I mean, probably the first spinner they've seen. This is the tourist trap spot. Yeah. They walked down. We walked down. We just, you know, typical, like, we were the scout crew. So it was kind of like divide and conquer. So we just went checking stuff out, seeing where fish are to see what we could do for, uh, for filming. See if we can get some of these to buy them. I'm literally gonna throw on something really small. So I got a bead on right now, I'm just gonna throw it. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Oh. oh camera. That was a fish. <gasps> That's where the wad of them was at, that bobber side. Bobber down right there. Got him. <laughs> That's a good fish. Oh, I lost my first. I lost my first. No. Hey, they're not. They're like not far. They're right there. They're right there. Short. Right there. He just went over the back of one. I saw that. I had a look He's still nosing it. Oh, oh, God. Do you? Oh, keep, oh, keep, keep. Twitch it, twitch it. Oh, dude, that one wants it bad. Do it again. God, oh, got a tug. Oh my gosh. I got whacked. I just got whacked. Yeah, dude. Oh, there he is. Oh! Did you see that? Yeah. Oh my goodness. My first good pitch with a freaking spinner. Really nice chrome fish. Chased it right to the bank. And then turned around and went away forever. And I was sad. Pretty low, I don't even want to pick on him. Yeah, let me go down and hit some chromers. Put chase him on the tide. Yeah. You know they gotta be sitting out there just waiting to come in. You know what? Tide's running out, so I mean, we're flushing in and out. We'll catch him. That was the greatest experience I've had all day. 
I'll tell you that much. Fish numero uno of the trip. Walked my butt off with you guys all the way down river. I'm sitting here listening to Mr. Melval talk, of all things, like he does best. Fish on. He talked me right into it. <laughs> <laughs> Being able to go off that bridge and look down and, and see all the fish kind of set it in for everybody like it's something like we've never seen before you know we have all these dreams and imaginations uh, about what our favorite destination in the world is going to be like or wherever the special trip we're going to go on is going to be and to show up and see it all right there in front of you that was was probably the most exciting part of the trip for the small group that was already here what did you guys do i just started touching them no. Don't you? But something happened to this one. Mm -hmm. It's got like too much line on it. Showing back up from day one, and of course, like I said before, we're neglecting all responsibility. Uh, we show up and open this box that this beautiful Air Outcast raft, um, and me and Lonnie pull out the, the first couple bags, and we're getting some things out. And he grabs his dry bag, and we both go, "Man, there's a lot of rope in this bag." And being that it's 11 o'clock at night, we both kind of look over and glance at each other and uh, it soaked in for a second of, of really what <laughs> we were looking at. It was a stitching for the floor. Um, so we stayed up till the wee hours of the morning. Uh, we uh, MacGyvered some, some tools to lace the floor through and spent the next three hours, three and a half hours, uh, until two o'clock in the morning putting this raft together. They could have really stalled the trip, but we just decided to go for it and, and fix the problem. That was crazy last night. I'm proud of us though. That was some great teamwork. Some engineering even. You guys did awesome. Dude, awesome management too. Absolutely. I mean, check this out once, what's bad? Hey, I don't micromanage. Just trust. I know how to delegate, <laughs> and I don't micromanage. Ah, you guys are doing great. Do I'm going to bed. <laughs> you guys got this. See ya. <laughs> we split up the groups. A few guys went trout fishing, and I don't know why you come up here to trout fish, but everyone has their thing. And Jordan and I took the drift boat out and wanted to scout out the river, kind of learn it and see where the fish are holding for the next group of guys that were flying in later the next day. This is gonna be nuts though. The river's gonna go up that much. It's gonna melt all that snow. It's gonna be high and dirty, man. Yeah. Tomorrow, it looks like, like 10 or 11, it's supposed to start raining a lot. So, I mean. I don't know what that means to you, but I think we should just try and bail and row as fast as we can until it starts raining and really, I mean, I don't know. Yeah. We're gonna see a lot of things today. There's a couple fish in that brush line. Oh yeah, very tight in there. See what we see today. Yeah. So we went up, we kind of just powered down the river, threw a lot of spinners, got into some good fish and just kind of scouted for everyone else. You know, I had some recollection of how, how the fish ran up the river and where they would be in certain conditions. Um, and basically just went on a scouting trip. The old slide technique. What I've been told is don't let the fish swim by you. You mean if we see them? If we see them, yeah. All the fish we see. Just get yeah. something in front of yep. them, they might turn. Right there, through all of them. Gotcha, that's so running by us. There he is. A fish, at least. Oh, there's more. Uh, there's more. And there's more and more and more and more. Okay, there's like 40. So I like where they were. At least a few of them. This will be a different challenge. We're going to get to see the, the river at a different level. 
it's gonna change a lot while we're here. It's gonna go from one drastic measure to another drastic measure, so I'd rather see it flowing a little bit more. Today still has a lot of potential. We're gonna be out here late, so we'll get to see an evening bite at least. Do you think they got a fish yet? Hope so. Don't scratch. I don't care how tough the conditions are. You work for fish. You, you know, like we didn't hike necessarily far yesterday, or we went to like the tourist trap spot. Ooh, there's some nice ones in there. Oh, he's got it. Oh, what? Do you see that? Did I just have another one bite it too? What do I do? He went between my legs. <laughs> what a pretty fish, huh? right now dude are you kidding are me? they running no they're like right there they're not doing anything this is why i was all excited when we came around the corner i just it, remembered this spot they look like lamprey on the bottom because they're just like so many of them there's, there's just like... <laughs> Guy. Heck yeah, cool. Oh no. Oh, upper lip. Mm. Sweet. Under that log. Nice. That was so badass. All That's right. A good way to start. Almost halfway down yeah. here, dude. <laughs> oh, you can. I think I can see. I can see him right there. Oh, here they come. Here he comes. Holy sh! They're like suspended bass out there. I'm getting them. Bottom line. Oh God. You don't even know. Okay, here we go, bud. You ready? Three, two, one, baby. Three, two, one. Oh my gosh. Oh, he's following it. Oh God, he's coming at us. He's gonna see us. Damn it, he turned. I really think we need a jig. Like the jig a jig. Twitch jig? I've done it before. I've uh, twitched, twitched worms. Now that just might work. Do you have a worm on? A little one. Do it. Oh, there he is. I wasn't even watching. That's a nice fish. Damn it, dude. You want to go to Colorado? What a specimen. God. I haven't felt the fish that strong in a long time. All season, down south. I've caught fish that size all year, and none of them, when they get in the net, like, rip it out of your hand. her tail, too. I, was, I mean, I, I got a sturdy grip. I wasn't crushing her, but you could just feel it. When she wanted out, she was out. Like, I, there's no way you're keeping her in your hand. She's gone. That was cool. Oh, 
there he is. Here. Yep. <laughs> Chrome. Okay. Man, look, look at that. that thing. Just everything we could imagine. Just perfect. All right? The hole we've been waiting for all day. Yeah. I dig it. All right. So we've been going down this road miles and miles and miles. Actually not that far, but this has been our scout day, so we have been tooling around. This is a four-wheel drive. Oh! oh. Relax, 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 relax. <laughs> no, I don't think it's got four-wheel drive. Are you kidding me right now? I'm just gonna keep going, guys. Oh my God, we're gonna die. Oh, there's a little gravel. <laughs> but yeah, there's definitely not been anybody down here, Phil. No. <laughs> Except for the moose. We're about to make Alaska Adventure Part 2 into survival. <laughs> this is survivor, man! <laughs> Look at that! There's a boat. Can we borrow that boat? Go catch a halibut? Yeah. Look at this. Ooh, child. I, I figured you'd either scratch a few of them out because you guys are good fishermen or you would just kill 30. But I didn't feel like the 30. I think the 30's coming on Today Thursday. Today not the day to catch a lot of fish. Yeah. That's why I called four. Yep. Do it again, back up a little bit, and we'll get it. Driving away at 4.30? Um, yeah. Let's do that. Or was it 4.45 or was it 5? I forget. Let's do 3.30. Okay. Wait, what? <laughs> Wait, what time are we <laughs> leaving? 4.30. I've okay. set my alarm for 4. Yes. That's All right, guys. Here we go. It's 1.14.20. Going to Jerry's house. Headed to Woodland. Driving all the way to Seattle. So Wednesday started out 12:30 in the morning. Pack up my stuff in my truck, hit the road, head to Jerry's house. From there, we rolled over to Matt's house, and then meet up with Marlin at the gas station down the road. It wasn't as bad as last time. I didn't almost die. Taping up our tub, full of fishing gear and camera equipment. Oh, guys, we're doing it. Winter Chrome Blend. Yeah, can't wait. What's the plan? What's going on? Sean's getting checked yeah, in. Gun. And his gun checked in. Sean, are you going to be protected from grizzly bears? Yeah. Springfield X hey, Ford and Cal. I'm going to need you to stay next to me the whole trip. No. Imagine traveling with like your 80 year old grandma. That's what it's like with Matt. <laughs> so you just got to check him in, take his bags. You, did you get him a wheelchair? Dude, I got really close. Matt, are you excited to fly right now? Yeah. Um, Overjoyed to fly. Are you terrified? No. Did you see what just happened to that Southwest flight? I don't want to talk about it. Come on. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm waiting. I'm going to puke. I'm so hot right now. Oh yeah, I cracked that one. I'm like thing. in too many layers. I don't know who set that thermostat, but they it was a set. woman. It had to be a woman. <laughs> <laughs> Phil's not even awake yet. Nope. So this is for. 
Got a whole bunch of goodness in there. He took all gear rods. He's leaving those here. No. Lies. The legend. <laughs> Don't you start with that. So after our scout day, uh, Wednesday was our last day, or, or the rest of our crew, the, uh, the we'll call them the B squad. Sure. Just because. Because <laughs> A comes first, we're the A squad. That's they're right, the B squad. They're the B squad. Mm -hmm. For no other reason at all. But uh, no, they came in and uh, on Wednesday, so we decided, well, with the prospects not looking good, we all just floated the main river. We launched pretty late. We all kind of got stuck in bed that morning till about six, seven o'clock. Um, but we got to the river, again, super, super tough conditions and, and went to work. Uh, headed down river and, and floated and floated and floated and went to the best spots that I thought we'd be. The boys are back in town. Watch rod tips too for the first whole lot of this voyage. There's definitely a, a point in the river where we're going to find a majority of the fish. And you'll see when we get there because it'll just, all of a sudden, there's just nothing, nothing, fish here, fish there. And then we'll get to a, a certain point in the river and every corner seems to have fish. And then as soon as you leave that section, there's nothing, there's nothing really. There's nothing other than a few movers which I think are gonna be great biting fish, but yesterday we just floated by them. There he is, top of it. Oh, broke that light line. Darn it. That bobber didn't even go under. It just started ticking. It was bouncing, bouncing, and stood straight up, and it was either a snag or a fish. It turned out to be a fish. My actual first fish that wasn't caught off of a bridge. Oh my god, Ooh. I gotta get a worm out. <laughs> There's something to that worm right now. Dude, that was epic. Yep. That was instantaneous. <laughs> that was awesome. Oh, that was excellent. Oh, I felt so good. Oh, beautiful, dude. It looks like a downriver fish. <laughs> There you go. See ya. There's something to that worm, man. Yes. I'm here down and we're gonna see the heaviest camp activity. There'll be a couple good spots around halfway. But back up. Go get more of it. There's a couple fish laying right here, but oh my god, back up, back up. And over the top of one, two. No one right there. He's, dude. What the? F he turned. Oh, keep, keep it going. They're looking hard at. It. You need to be about another five feet further. Ten feet away. Wow. We're not gonna get a better shot at steelhead than that. That. They're unharassed. There's 30 of them laying in the run. They're laying up here up to by the tree now too again. You know, for the most part, steelhead are biters. Like they bite a lot of different stuff. But man, those first mm -hmm. couple days, they were very keyed in on very like I never seen steelhead be that color sensitive and that really that sensitive yeah we had to switch to a lot of different colors a lot of different presentations and jigs and yarnies and beads and threw it, it all crazy out. threw it all out oh yeah oh my god he that thing absolutely crushed it and i missed he had his mouth he wanted it Just twitching his spoons that was cool oh god him. oh my no. god <laughs> Whoa! All you see is white mouth. Oh, he wanted to kill it. Hold on, there's a feisty one in there. Oh my god. He, oh god! Oh my god, he, he threw it again! He hit it, he hit it again. Come down. Got him! Oh, Damn it! <laughs> no! <laughs> He'll eat again, dude. He's stupid as all get out. Let's try to let's work these for a little bit and then we can go. Because I mean this is like the first time we got some fish that are actually want to fight a little bit. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Got down to a certain area where we'd seen a lot of fish and decided, me and Cameron finally pulled off and said, hey, let's just give this, let's give this a minute. Let's figure out what we're doing wrong here. Uh, and so we put on anchor and, and could see all the fish. It was all sight fishing at this point in time because the river was so low. Hear that motor. Get hit. Got him! Oh! Got him! <laughs> We just wanted to hear that motor. You 
beautiful fish. Jet boat comes screaming up the river. Been sitting here beating on fish for an hour now, watching hundreds of them swim around. That little jig goes floating through as the jet boat comes through and that fish goes forward and just destroys it. First nice fish of the day. Made the day. I'm happy, I don't have to fish anymore. I'll give up. She turns this way, she's mine. Oh, that's what I didn't want to do. Nope, she's gonna go, she's gonna go. Gotta go ahead in here. There it is. There she is. Got her. Perfect. Woo! Yeah! Yeah! I don't think we should leave yet. That, is, is, that, is that the same fish? <laughs> is that really this? No, it's not. I'm just saying, is that the, it's a little, it's, it's a scotch smaller, but it's still a tank head. There we go. Right over the net. Thank you. What a sludge. I think it's a beast. Oh, there he is. Oh, there he goes. Cameraman on it. said no way not today brothers so we're here probably two hours now had some great action there's still a hundred fish sitting here but we got to get moving <clears throat> went really well though it was trial and error yeah a total trial and error we kept changing kept changing kept changing got fish on certain things and then kept changing we hook one more Lonnie's gotten a few down here but uh, I can't stand it anymore we need to move there's got to be more fish down here spawned out. Oh, there we go. It's raining. Matt, you made it. Yeah. You did it. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, it's cold. Rob, hey. you excited for your first trip? Super excited. In Alaska, right? First time? Ready to get the waders on and go. We got off the plane. Uh, they unloaded everything, obviously. Threw it in Tammy's Suburban. Loaded half of us up. So Jerry, and Rob and Matt got to come to the to the old lodge here first. Thanks for I, coming. I promise not to leave you. Hey, go ahead and grab your plane ticket for the ride home. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'll take the rods with me. That's fine, we got plenty. She leaves and she says, I will not forget about you guys. I'll be back in like 20 minutes. Me and Sean are just hanging out, chatting, BSing, like probably like a good half hour goes by. And we realize like, Maybe she forgot about us. Maybe she's not coming back. Loading, loading it into the, loading her up. Dad on the bay. This place freaking looks nice. I'm stoked. This place is bad A. Look at the galley. I mean, it's so awesome. We went to the lodge, got everyone set in, and we pretty much put our waders on and took off and went to the river. Um, to go check out and see what, see if, see if the fish were, were happening. Game time, what are we doing here? Alright, we're gonna go try to catch a fish, that's what we're doing. <laughs> we're gonna go try to catch a fish. Rob, are you getting one or what? We're gonna try. Dude, we're about, look at this. There's a steelhead in that little hole right underneath that tree. Getting your rods out? Get my rods out, about, about to make my first couple casts on the... Why do you always put green on the top of the addictive float? 
So if I lose a bobber, I know, hey, that's my bobber because I find them in the river all the f***ing time. Alright, first cast of the trip. It'd be badass if your float went under, dude. Rob's second cast ever in Southeast Alaska and he's breaking off. Oh, oh no! What happened right there? I hooked the fish over there and I thought I made a good hook set, but apparently not. He went me, pop, came off. We were at one of the holes that we actually started for Coho because that's where I wanted to go check out first. And he makes a cast like Center River in like three inches of water. And I'm like, Matt, there's not gonna be any fish laying there. Instantly he hooks up, right? And I thought it was gonna be go time. Like, I'm like, we're gonna start whacking fish. Matt. I'm pretty excited, Jerry. Talk about what just happened. Got my first steelhead. Was that in a typical spot? No, it was actually out in the middle of the river in about a foot and a half of water. Were you paying any attention to when said bobber drained? None whatsoever. When Matt hooked the first one, I was like, oh my gosh, it's gonna be on just like it was for Coho. We're gonna freaking beat him down. I was so freaking excited. All right, Matt, first day. What do you think, dude? I loved it. Little weirdest got, water we were fishing. The tide water. Yeah. But I got my first skillet. Day three, I think, I'd say it was almost my favorite day, honestly. Because uh, it was the first day we all went out there together and, and learned something. You know, every corner of the river was, was something new and something fresh, uh, something that we'd never seen before and had to use our skill to, to crack down and, and to execute. So it was probably, probably one of the most memorable days, that's for sure. Fish is messing my world up right now. Oh my god, really? Really? He's all in the cover. You know? Ready? Chin up. Chin up. <laughs> Sweet. Little seven pounder just spanked me, dude. <laughs> there he is. Whoa, no, 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 no. Little, this little guy is really a, you are a problem child. Come here, buddy. Mwah. Fish kicked my ass. <laughs> oh, he's coming, he's coming. Oh. <laughs> oh, he thinks he wants to kill it so bad. Oh, no. oh my god, he's still sitting here too. Oh, oh he's coming, he's coming. God damn it! You see that shit? He's just going nuts on it. Oh my god, that's insane. It's like one fish and it wants it so bad it's crazy. Switching spoons for steelhead guys, it's the new thing. Don't you know? Oh yeah. Oh, you just must keep doing that exact same jump. Oh my god. Oh, that's a fish? Nice fish. Ooh. Ooh Owie. Something's guarding. How you like that? Oh, oh there he is. Oh my yes. god. Yes. Oh. 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 oh my god, he was in there. He was just backwards. Oh, I had him in there. He was like going like this. I saw it. I going saw it. Like this. <laughs> oh, it was a stick the whole time. I know. <laughs> Dude, that was a really thick fish. I know. I know. It's it's like through the shoulders thing. It was just like. Ooh. Sweet. That was cool. 
I think tomorrow, like, I'm getting more after seeing that little move that Lonnie did. I'm getting so excited now. Like, this is turning into Alaska. Alright guys, we're finishing up here. It's really cold, it's really wet. It probably dropped 20 degrees today while on the river. We've been at it for 12 hours, and it took 12 hours to figure out some really cool things to make these steelhead go. Tomorrow, this rain, I think is gonna turn it on. So, anticipation's high. We'll see what happens. Let's get the hell out of here. So we loaded up the boats and we headed back up to the lodge and uh, they were all here. They had, they'd been out fishing already, walking the banks and had hooked a couple fish and didn't really, again, know what to expect. I, th I think nobody really did. No, dude. Yeah. There was pods of, there were some fish. He's moving. At Lonnie, at the end, we go by and the boat, this boat, we're rowing a three boat line and the boat goes, oh, there's some fish right there. Like Lonnie pulls over strokes two and two casts on like some just chrome dive rights in the last half mile. You went down last night, you guys rode down last night. Not there. Now they're there. Every single hole that we stopped at, we only fished up a half a mile of stream, but every single fish hole we fished in, there was fish in every single hole. It was, not like, that. It was yeah. not like that until this afternoon. We came and we're telling our stories and hooting and hollering about how amazing our day was and just to see the excitement on everybody's face. It was a really cool, really cool tension in the air. Um, it's kind of hard to explain, but to have that many close friends getting ready to go out in the morning to do something that they all love. It was really neat, it was cool to see. Thursday we woke up at the crack of dawn, 3 a.m., which I've never gotten up that early to go winter steelhead fishing. Our concern was that, you know, with the river coming up and the log jams and stuff like that, we wanted to be on the water early because we didn't know you know, if we were gonna run into obstacles getting down. So we, we broke naked, we got up early, got down to the river. We powered through five miles of river as fast as we can row, powered. And we seen all this awesome river to fish. I keep telling Lonnie, I'm like, dude, are we gonna hit this hole? Are we gonna hit this hole? And he's like, no, just wait, just wait. We're gonna get down to the fish. And I'm like, there's fish everywhere. The big from we're going down. Right here in the bucket, so this is right there. Look left. Look straight out. Straight out. Straight out that way. Just keep watching. Yeah, I saw a turn over there. There's a bunch over here. The breath line. God, that thing wanted my jig so bad. He turned for it. I think I can get that one to eat. Watch this. That a boy. I just put that worm on too. Pretty fish. Ooh, he's already done. Done though. Done, done. Jump right in the net for me, sir. That's my first Southeast Alaskan steelhead. I'm excited. Jordan's talking about this one hole the whole time we're floating down the river. We gotta get to this hole, we gotta get to this hole. And we get there and I remember rolling up and I think Lonnie and the guys were already parked in the hole and they had basically told us that they had been sluicing them, catching them a ton. So we go up and we kind of anchor next to them and start having fun. And I remember, I don't remember the really the order of who hooked up, but all I remember is we hooked up and we had a triple. Oh dude, here we go. Yeah. Oh, he just freaking flew out of the water. Open that thing up for me, man. You ever tell two steelhead at once? So we're just finishing up this triple header. Um, everybody kind of had this tingly feeling in their stomach. It was probably the first triple header any of us have ever had. Uh, and especially all together, sharing it with all our friends. Um, but we land the fish, high five, high five, almost step on a beaver trap, get back in the boat. And I row back out on the river and I drop anchor. And Marlon throws an old man cast over his shoulder. And typical Marlon, I'm not paying attention to my float and it drains. 
and I just remember turning back and not being able to find my float and I just boom and I set the hook and it was just solid like the thing didn't even move this probably won't even be that big and immediately I watched this fish and I was standing on my seat and I was I, I don't think Marlon had sunglasses on at this time but I could see down in the, into the water and the fish turned and all I saw was its tail and I immediately started screaming like a little girl oh, oh my God. it's huge that's huge. Every time he head shakes, dude, I can just feel, boom, just, you can just feel his head just, he's got so much power. You could just feel the tension in the air once we finally saw this fish, once it surfaced and, and six guys got to get a look at it, what was on the end of Marlon's line. Um, everybody started going into a panic, honestly. There's multiple nets getting thrown around, people jumping out of boats, and uh, all I was trying to do is get the boat in a safe spot to land it. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Can't, can't, can't. Ready? Oh, you f***ed. He's around. We're gonna luck out. I think this will be it right here. Luck out and get this thing's nose right now. Okay, coming in. Coming in. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> that took Lonnie out. That's a big freaking fish. Lift that's that net up. Mother oh yeah. 40, that's a big fish. <laughs> Stud. Getting all emotional, emotional right here. This thing is beast. We fought that thing forever, dogging it and dogging it, and dogging it. Get it in, and it's the biggest fish of the trip. Pretty much the one everyone's after the, pre the rest of the week. It was 40 by 19. One of my bigger steelhead that I've ever. I've ever caught in my life, so. Right there, right there, don't, oh my God. Dude, he looks Lord so Lord have big. mercy. Pretty much from that point on, I didn't even care if I caught a fish. I was just happy to be here with my buds and fishing and excited, so. We get to this one hole, and I didn't realize that Lonnie had brought his plug gear. And he's like, this looks like a good run that we can start plug fishing. And I'm like, yes, you're a genius. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, baby. It's a jumper. Here we go. All right, here he goes. Bugs don't work, bro. Fish, 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 fish. Oh, yeah. You're good. You're good. So these guys and their fancy cameras, uh, zoomed in and said I was setting the hook too fast on these plug ticks. And I've been plug fishing for a long time. I know what to do in that situation. I may have set the hook a little early on one, one fish. And that was the one fish that Travis just happened to get everything on video. There he is. Oh! We are way behind the pack. I think, how far do you think they are, Josh? Probably, probably 20 miles ahead of us. Yeah, yeah. 20, 30, give or take a few miles. I bet they're, I bet they're a mile ahead of us. We they, had some situations this morning. They, they we kind of fell glory. behind. <laughs> Those guys are definitely rolling for glory. They're trying to get down there and get on the fresh fish. Maybe some less stagnant fish. But hey, you know what we're doing? Take Playing clean up. So me and Phil got on some fish, and Sean had been having the camera in his hand the entire day. So I'm like, here, dude, make a cast. Me and Phil are kind of just standing there BSing, and lo and behold, my buddy Sean hooks up. First cast. Son. 
Sean's got a fish on. What do you think, Sean? What happened? It just drained. <laughs> it just drained straight to the facts right there. Oh, oh he's a chunky it. little fish. That's why you run 17. Instead of 15, it makes a huge difference. It was a nice fish though, Sean. It was kind oh, of chubby. and for example, don't forget your landing nets. Yeah, don't forget your landing nets. Yeah, Josh. And the bobber didn't even drain, dude. I just was reeling in again. Seriously? Yes. No kidding. I swear to God. Oh my goodness. I picked it up to reel in and I felt it tighten. So I hooked this fish, right? And we're fighting it to the boat, fighting it to the boat, and I tell Phil, I'm like, hey dude, look at that. There's two fish pairing up together right there. Like, I have this fish hooked, and there's a fish right next to it. And Phil's like, hold it there, hold it there. Let's not land it real quick. Let me try something. She was hung out right next to the boat and with that buck. I picked up that spinner, put it right in front of his face, and then a log just came up. Whoop! Just sucked down that spinner right in front of us. Oh! 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 Wow. Oh! 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 That's so awesome, dude. Watching him eat that thing. I'm like hogging this thing. I can't even get him in. He's like, what, six pounds? Don't do that. No. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, very aggressive fish. It was a nice buck. We ended up landing both of them and that was a lot of fun. How big were those fish? Oh, they were about eight, ten pounds. He's like what, six pounds? It was a nice good fish. sized fish. Very healthy looking fish. It was great. You there, man. He came up pinned right there. Did he? That's sweet. Holy oh, shit. Look at that. He thought about it for a second. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, what are we doing? We can run him down. <laughs> what a beauty. All of a sudden, one fish comes out, two fish comes out, all of a sudden, three fish charges my spinner, and they swirled around. This guy just nabbed him. You know, let's tell the story. We were rowing down, and we come around this corner, and I see, like, probably 40 fish under this log. And I'm like, dude, we need to go try to fish that. So, <laughs> so we walk the log out, and literally, it's like coho fishing. In the yeah. Wood. <laughs> and I get one, obviously. And then Phil goes up there with the spinner and hooks one. And now we're going to go do it over and over again. So right after you release this guy on. Fishing in Alaska. Do you, is this fun rowing these freaking yeah. rowing these wakes out? This wraps it all up. Hey, you want to hear some good news? I do. You're almost there. Can you see it? Yeah. 
I'm not gonna look. Yeah, just keep going. If you're going right for a giant set of logs, you're gonna have to look. Aw, oh, man. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, today was freaking. Dude, how was crazy. An how freaking nuts. It was such a climax to the whole week. You know, I know. We put in a lot of work, so. To come I'll down, be able to show everybody and share with everybody. Yeah. The first day, what it's all about. I mean, some cool stuff happened. I want to know how many they went in front of us when they bailed. I think they got more than we did. In rock? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was great. Nobody can count. Who was it? Was it Rob and um, Rob and somebody else came walking out of the woods? And then we're all convening, talking there, and then and then the officers come back out. Mm -hmm. And one of the officer that had just checked Jerry and Matt, like right when they got off the boat, he was Johnny on the spot there checking them. You got your license on you too, or is it in the boat? I do. It's right here. Do you? Okay. You see it? Okay. Here. All right. So that was crazy. Cameron just dropped us off, and literally when we walked up from the bushes, the police were right there, <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. It was crazy. And they walked away and then he went about doing his thing and then just a few moments later you get right here gunshot that cop running when he came back he was like that's exactly where you were standing where i was talking to you he said the bear came at him stopped and then like fully full blown charged him seriously yeah so he, had a shoot. he shot the gun and it turned away full blown dude so they come out and they're telling us the story and I'm like Holy crap, Jerry, he almost died. <laughs> like, he, he was freaked out about bears the rest of the freaking trip just because, like, I mean, they would have, they must have missed each other by just moments. spot that I will recognize that no. beaver trap would be perfect. Yeah. And I'm trying to find a freaking... You do a confluence like on the point on the tip right there. That's what we do. Yeah, because that's right awesome. on the tip of the confluence. Just kind of put it in the Yeah, but so why would you pull over on the left oh, side? Oh, I gotta take a lead. On the left side? I still gotta take a lead. And then I'll just make sure that Travis is there for the plant and then you're there for the reveal. In one of the rooms here, they've got these, these huge moose, this moose rack. And I think it was a little combination of Josh and I'm like, oh my gosh, we're like, how can we do a little prank on Marlon? And cause he's an avid freakish shed hunter. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to, to get him. Like, just like he got us last, in last movie with the damn, <laughs> the damn predator call. So this is revenge. This, this is revenge. straight up revenge. Straight up revenge. So we, we had, we were rolling talking about it because we knew, we knew Marlon would be just so, we, we knew we were going to get him. Uh, all right, this is what we're doing, guys. Remember the first movie, the little, uh, Scene. Yeah, the, the bear scene when we all freaked out. What we do now, as you I guys mostly know, Marlin is a full-blown shed attic. So the lodge had a oh, had it's a not moose a shed, but it's a cutoff. Yep. And we're so, gonna go dump it in the woods. We're gonna dump it in the woods, and the camera's gonna come here and like, oh, sh we got a shed. Marlin be like, that's it. We're gonna go all day shed hunting, not doing anything else. Get your packs, boys. Yeah, let's, let's go. Shed. Let's go. Yeah, we're shed hunting. Get the get the. Get the drone in the air, dude. Fresh brown. So we're gonna go put it up there. <laughs> Fresh brown. This right. is last year's go. shed, but it's okay. We'll find it. We know Cam won't be able to find it, so we'll put it somewhere easy. I think over here is a good place. 
Jordan, easy to find. Cam's not finding that thing. No. But hey, I'm gonna make a cast. Hey, he said like super easy to find. Oh yeah. I think, look, look at this nice little rubbing tree. This moose was over here rubbing away. Rubbing away. Leaving those fresh tines sticking up. This is all they're gonna see. I'll draw an arrow. I remember we were supposed to meet everyone at the confluence. Everyone was gonna meet at the confluence. And we get to the freaking confluence, and I'm like, there's no one even here. I'm like, we're not, what are we doing? We're not meeting here. And Cameron's like, all right, well, I gotta pee anyway. And uh, he gets out of the boat, and he's sitting there, and he's peeing, and I'm like, all right, dude, let's freaking go. Let's go fish. Like, all the other guys are so far down the river. Finally, I caught a glimpse of, like, some track going over to the side, you mm -hmm. know, a few feet. And then I look down there, and I see a little tiny arrow, like, that someone had used their foot and scraped in the mud. I'm like, okay, bingo. What? Oh my God, yes. Yes! It's like laying right here on the trail. There's moose everywhere. That is so, I'm going. Let's go find the other one. We gotta find the other one. We gotta find the other one. That is so awesome. That is so freaking awesome. Like blood awesome. on it and something? Dude, there's, I was like, there's like fresh moose right there. And I like walk back there, I look, and it's just laying there right on the trail. Let's go try to find the other one real quick. Dad, I'm finding the other one of those. Dad! I'm looking for at least 10 minutes. No, we gotta go. Dude, look at that thing, look at this thing. Look at this thing, look at it. Hold on, let me get out. Hey, I'm so excited. I found my first shed. Dude, you know what we're doing with this? Hmm. We're gonna freaking have someone do some badass cool like some you know because if you've seen those things that's what me and sean were talking about it'd be badass to get a oh, moose. The they do thing. the engravings on these and it looks so that's sick. a good idea we could do like freaking addicted alaska or can't put cameron black on it dude it'd be so dope we gotta go find the other one the problem is we have to buy that from the other guy that sold us that one no -uh. <laughs> you're so <laughs> <laughs> i knew it <laughs> You're so. That's for the wolf, shit, buddy. You're so <laughs> freaking. We knew we'd fire you up with the shed, honey. I thing. I'm sorry, buddy. I hate you so much. <laughs> I freaking hate you. Come on, Give me that this was awesome. No, that was the one from Travis's room. I, oh, I, I was it? I planted it. Oh my god. Where? Where, where did you? Oh, he got way up ahead and freaking... That's why Lonnie was like, out of here. I like, didn't even look I, at the I, base. I, the whole time I'm sitting there like, oh my God, look at this. I'm and like, I even it. grabbed it and was like, oh yeah, I didn't even look at the freaking base. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. We had to get you. They're getting me back. They freaking pranked me and they took one of the sheds from the lodge and hid it out in the woods. Anyway, I was a little disappointed, but it was super funny and they got me. Jordan, can they eat without the I, E, at the end? <laughs> Jordan, what's the game plan today? We're rolling fast. We got good water conditions. Oh, sweet hail. And it's hailing. Um, today looks really good. We're gonna go down river to where we saw all the fish last night. I don't think the water came up enough to make a move. So we're gonna kind of stick with the routine we had yesterday because it worked really good. The conditions haven't changed. So it's got really good options here. You think we might catch one? I think a couple maybe. Yeah, we might get some. Depends on who casts first. That's fish. Did you get him? <laughs> oh, I was just making sure you were at him. Oh, okay. I like, I like that. <laughs> it's just like a little, like, seven pounder, dude. Yeah, he's pretty. Oh, he's out Yeah, it's like a winner. These fish don't give up ever. Oh my god. Am I gonna hit anything? Too? Yeah, we are about to. Way over here. Oh, that's a fucking nice fish.
Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> that was a nice freaking fish. You're already in the water, dude? Nope. You're not going to give it to Nope. Give Pulling it up to the hole. You're already in the water. Jordan wants first cast. And he guaranteed Ooh, a fish this first looks cast. tasty. So, we're going to let Jordan <laughs> get first cast. Oh. All right, we got to cut back to this frame because Jordan has been untangling his rod for five minutes <laughs> for first cast. So, that's... <laughs> I don't even know what's going on <laughs> anymore. <laughs> All right, he's back. Here we go. He's in. There it goes. Here we go. Oh. Oh. There it is! And we got him. That's what I'm talking about. You literally said that's not fair, and then it came. Well, that's, a, that's a good fish. That's a special fish. Why don't we get out and bank this hole? Here we go. So, reflecting on the day before, there was a, an encounter with the bear. It put everybody on edge a little bit. So the, the following day, Friday, uh, I we stopped at a log jam. Uh, Lonnie anchored up below us and I had to go relieve myself. Yo, bear, bear, bear. Bear, 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 bear. Dude, that was, uh, I lose it. I. <laughs> am running with my hands down my pants like a little girl. Sean just, you know, <laughs> peeing away, running around, peeing going everywhere, <laughs> was running for his pistol, and I just died laughing. And Rob had no idea, and he started screaming bear too. He's like, bear, 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 bear. I was jumping in the raft like, let's go. <laughs> Why are we here? <laughs> and I literally, like, I was dying in the river. My abs were hurting. I, oh, it was the funniest thing in my life. I'm glad that it was shallow water or I just would have drowned. Oh, my stomach hurts. <laughs> what are we doing now, Jordan? We're gonna go catch more steelhead. Are we? Where are we going? I want to go up river. Can you put a motor on this? You got the wrong guy for that. Apparently she wasn't ready. Come on, pretty lady. I don't understand what's happening here. You just saw a fish. Fish oh, is good. switching? Yep. I've never seen you, uh... Behind the horns, Marlon. I do it occasionally. I do it occasionally. You know, sometimes I get on these sticks. I'm a pro out here in these streets. Do not let that fall. Don't, here, oh my God. <laughs> okay, put it back in. Push, put it. <laughs> I was like, what is going on right now? Oh, 
Look at that. Good job. Oh, here he goes again. <laughs> Just bulldogging it. Come on. Get him, Morlino. Yeah. Thank you. So the other thing that happened on Friday that definitely needs to be talked about because Mr. Cameron Black tries to think that he's Alaskan pro guide. We're floating down the river and he's the whole time. I mean, we. He's like, oh, we got to get to this hole. There's just one hole we got to get to, and he's just rowing. He's blowing by fish, and we're way the hell ahead of everyone. And he's just blowing by fish and blowing by fish, and before you know it, I'm like, dude, I think I can hear the ocean. And he's like, oh, dude, I screwed up. I, I messed up. Literally, he had rowed by every single freaking hole to the takeout like two and a half hours early before anyone else was going to be there. We didn't even get a fish like the last half of the day. So Cameron, love fishing with you, buddy, but I would have liked to have caught a couple more steelhead that day. Between that road there and that road, there was all those like snow banks. And that look, ask Phil what his opinion is on that would be, because he's better at those little trout streams. Yeah. If you but go there, go it's guaranteed. The lake. And this, they all winter here. Mm. Or we go. I'd rather just go to. I think this else. is all open right now. Or no, it's closed for two miles above the bridge. And two yeah, miles so it's like probably like right there. We did see a steelhead too sitting under that bridge. But no matter what, you're grabbing the six of us at six. Yeah, we'll be there at six. Sweet. So on Saturday, what we were going to do is everyone was going to kind of go adventure. This was kind of, you know, everyone was going to see what they could find, see if they could go find steelhead on other little creeks or cutthroat, maybe look at some lakes, just see what's out there. Me and Jordan decided, hey, let's get in your boat that you have here and let's, let's freaking go get into some holes before anyone else. We all know what's about to happen here. These guys taking their fairy sticks. Dude, would you hurry up? We're gonna roll down with some worms. Jesus Christ. Jerry's getting aggro already. And we're gonna catch fish. There's uh, apparently some angry brown bears in the area too, so. Packing heat. Yeah, hopefully it works out. You saw me set the hook on that, did you not? Are you kidding me, Jordan? Dude, he picked that up so gently. It was so awesome. Good stuff, dude. Do it again. Got him. Oh my god, look at that thing go! <laughs> good job, good job! It just gave it to us. That's also how you're supposed to treat a wild steelhead. Nice job, dude. Okay, Good release. Back.
That's probably one of the best hook sets I've ever done in my life. It sounded like it. I reeled down and just <laughs> gave it to him. So on Saturday, I decided I really wanted to fly fish. We'd been all been talking about it, and uh, we'd all kind of scoped out some runs that I knew I could swing in. Um, so that's what, that's kind of what my goal was coming up here on this trip was to have some success on on my spay rod. And so we get to one hole in particular, and I tell Marlon I'm gonna swing this, and he's like, "All right, I'm gonna watch while I won't fish. Uh, just have Sean follow you." Oh my God, I'm heartbroken. <sighs> That's the look of disappointment. I set the hook. That's what I did, I set the hook. Really hard. <laughs> I've been bobber fishing all week. That made the whole trip worth it, dude. That right there. Yeah. That was definitely a goal accomplished and, and gave me some, some more running room for the for the next day, wanting to go back out and, and try it again. Try going up. Might run into something. We're, we've already gone down river about four miles. Haven't seen a single thing. Might be time to go up. So we ended up hiking the river, which was cool to see and talk to people up there, not that cool to fish. We didn't really know where we were headed, just upriver, and the water was still pretty low, so the holes were really few and far between. So we ended up not even really fishing at all. We went back to the rig, drove around to some other little streams, um, caught some pretty cool cutthroat. I mean, I'll admit it, I trout fished in Alaska for cutthroats like this big. A friend of mine here in town uh, took us out to do something really special. Um, me and Travis and Sean got to hop in his boat and, and go out and check some tanner crab pots with him, uh, which in itself was a really cool experience getting to go out in the bay and, and feel like you're a big Bering Sea crabber. The water is crystal clear blue. We go out into the bay and there's whales out there. Start pulling up crab pots. That's badass. Crazy looking up. Threw him in a bucket and, and Travis had to hide in the corner the whole time because he's deathly allergic to shellfish. Um, but after that, we got to go do something really, really special, and he took us to a pretty sacred place on an island uh, out in the bay here that his family was from. His, his father-in-law actually was the last person to be born in the Clinket village on this island. We go to the cabin, park the boat, he fires up the uh, propane stove and starts cooking these crab for us on the beach. And we sit there and tell stories and just reflect on the trip. The mountains were in the background. It was, it was awesome. It was probably the most beautiful setting and the, the coolest thing I've ever done. It was, it was really neat to be accepted like that.
So Sunday was Redemption Day. I uh, loaded the camera boys up and grabbed the spay rod and we headed up river um, to go try to swing up another steelhead. And uh, what unfolded next was pure magic. The whole time that these guys were filming and I was casting, I don't know about these guys, but I was I was shaking the whole time. It was just such a beautiful setting. There were so many fish in the run. And as I took two steps down and casted, and two steps down and casted, the anticipation was just ice thin. God, that made my trip. Makes it all worthwhile. Everybody, I'm gonna lay that right across your hands here. Get her on her. Wow. I think I'm gonna get another one. I really do. After I'd hooked that last fish, I was trying to show off and uh, land it by hand with, with just tail on the fish uh, and broke my fly off that had been working so well. And so I grab off my little holder, Phil's fly, which is beautiful. It looked identical to this fly. And my hands are shaking so much, I went to put the knot through the eye and dropped it in the river and it went straight down. <laughs> there went my last good red fly. Cameraman day out here in Alaska. And we're doubled up! Sean's got the biggest one. Peachy pearl, red pearl. Peachy pearl, red pearl. Special experience to get to take out the camera guys. Um, I mean, they definitely got more sand than I do to be able to stand there for six days and watch people just rake on fish right in front of them. Your fish has so much sea lice on it, Sean. It's not even funny. Like, it has like a four inch tail on it. I've never seen that in my life. Look at this. Oh, that's Flip a big her over. Fish. Flip her over. Look at all those sea lights. Got a couple of beautiful fish and then to watch them double up right side by side and land the fish in the same cradle net was really, I think, kind of made their trip, obviously. You know, they, they didn't have anything to bitch about after that. So it was, it was really special to get to share it with them. I was really happy to be there. So we're going home today and, you know, once again, new place, a lot to learn. You know, learn some new things about steelhead that I never even, you know, kind of thought they would do and just how they behaved and how they acted and how we caught them. And yeah, I learned some stuff. That's for sure. It's a whole other system of fish that I've never even seen before. So this is the last day for group two, and basically we have done nothing, but we've cleaned up, we've packed, we've literally hung out at the, at the kitchen table for about four hours. It's been a really good day, actually. A really good way to finish the trip. As the last day came to an end, we got to reminisce about the trip and really just talk about all the things that keep us chasing steelhead year after year. Being addicted to steelhead fishing is hard to describe. For a true steelhead angler, 
the passion flows through your veins. The thought of a bobber draining never leaves your mind. The feeling of a steelhead grabbing a spoon, it never gets old. Standing in the pouring down rain, sleet, and snow all day for the chance to shake hands with one of these incredible fish. These are just a few of the ways we can describe this addiction. Although the only real way to truly understand this feeling is to experience it yourself. So as yet another amazing adventure comes to a close, I say this again, go on your own adventure, plan a trip with your fishing buddies, but this time around, bring a new angler with you. Show him or her what it means to be addicted. Being addicted to steelhead fishing, it can't be described through words. It's something you live, it's something you experience, and most importantly, it's something you pass on to others. The local time is 7.10. I'd like to give a special welcome and shout out to Cameron Black, also known as the legend. <laughs> Please remain seated with your seatbelt fastened until we have arrived at the gate and the fastened seatbelt sign has been turned off. Oh my god. <laughs> 